Father God, with those, that prayer, that we will not live here the same way that we came. Father God, that our expectations will not be cut short. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Hallelujah. I want to read all of that. Daniel 11.32. I want to read all of it in the Amplified Version. And it reads thus. And such as violate the covenant, he shall pervert and seduce with flatteries. But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits for God. Praise the Lord. But the people who know their God. So there is something that he's going to, this strong person who has taken over will try to do. He will try to pervert. He will try to seduce with flatteries. He will try to make people feel good about themselves by telling them all kinds of lies for the sole purpose of getting them to violate the covenant. But there is a but. It says, but the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits for God. Hallelujah. This is indeed a season of exploits. Hallelujah. Somebody out there say, I am poised for exploits. Just say, say, I am poised for exploits. I am poised. You're ready. You're ready to go. And you will do exploits in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But the key, the key, the key is knowing God. Hallelujah. Those that know their God. That is the key. Knowing God. Hallelujah. And I asked myself, I said, what does that mean in today's world? Hallelujah. What does it look like in our time? What does that look like for me? What does that look like for you? What does knowing God look like? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we begin to explore this, I want us to go to the book of 2 Peter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Book of 2 Peter. And I look at uh, verse chapter 1. And we're going to start to read from verse 2. So we'll read from verse 2 to 4. And I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Peter. Chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation. It says, may grace and perfect peace cascade over you as you live in the rich knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as you live in the rich knowledge, knowing, praise the Lord, of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. Everything we need has already been deposited not going to be but already been hallelujah yeah. by his divine power for all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him hallelujah yeah. the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name praise the lord hallelujah. 
Someone out there say he knows my name. He knows my name. Come on, say it. He said, Jesus, Jesus knows my name. Knows my name. Declare it. Say Jehovah, Jehovah knows, knows my, name. my name. He knows who I am. He knows who I am. He knows my name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Says, for all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Hallelujah. As a result of this, he has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So that through the power of these tremendous promises, you can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that are of the world. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Does that remind us of Daniel 11, 32a, that says he would try to cause them to break the covenant with flatteries and all kinds of things. He would try to get them to break their covenant. But those who know their God, hallelujah, shall prove themselves strong in the name of Jesus and shall stand firm and do exploits. By knowing God, we begin to share in the divine nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has already given it to us. He says, for all this was lavished on us. We already have it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The ability and the means for exploits have already been given to us. Do I hear the sound of hallelujah? Hallelujah. Do I hear the chorus of hallelujah? Hallelujah. Do I hear a chorus saying, thank you, Jesus? Because in Christ Jesus, in him, the ability and means for exploits has already been lavished on us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, the key, like I said, is in knowing. And I want to tell three stories. One is a personal story. And that personal story is something that I believe that all of you can relate Now, for a number of years, I was paying subscription to AA, you know, for for your car. You know, when your car breaks down, AA comes in, they help you out. I was paying subscription. What I did not realize, because I did not read everything and read the fine print, was that my bank account, I bank with Barclays, as a result of the type of current account that I have with Barclays, one of my benefits is that the RAC, another company that offers the same service, comes with it. As a result of that, I didn't know. And for years, I was paying, duly paying AA, they will increase their yearly fee, I will pay. Until I realized that my goodness, This, my bank account, actually gives me this same thing free. And I don't have to pay additional. Of course, I cancel the AA. Can you see what knowledge is? That even though I had it, even though it was there and it was mine, because I lacked knowledge. I lacked knowledge. What happened? I was spending money that I could have kept and used for anything else. Praise the Lord. So knowledge is the key, my brothers and my sisters. We cannot assume that we know it all. Praise the Lord. And today, God is going to help us know how we can get to know more. Praise the Lord. Get to know more of him and get to tap into the exploits and and everything that God has for us. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to tell two stories now. One of them, I'm sure you all know, and I mean, I'm not, this is not it because of time, you know, and I will not be able to do a guessing game, but somebody may just say, I know who Pastor Yu is going to talk about and just type it out there. Praise the Lord. While I go to the, to the reference of the day, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. 
Praise the Lord. So I will give you a clue. I'm going to First Samuel. And I'm going to chapter 17. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to verse 26. I'm sure you know who I'm going to talk about. There are a number of scriptures. I'm going to read them first. Hallelujah. I'm just going to, oh, of course, Sister Kemi, you got it right. It is David. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. So I'm going to 1 Samuel 17, and I'm going to read a number of verses, and then we'll discuss because of time, and we need to make it, you know, succinct. I have a prayer. My prayer is this, that God would take this short message this equivalent of two loaves of bread or five loaves of bread and two fish. Multiply it and enrich your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That is my prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm reading verse 26 and I'll skip verse, verses as we go along. So First Samuel 17 verse 26. David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine? And removes this disgrace from Israel. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine. That he should defy the armies of the living God. Now jump with me to verse 33. Verse 33. Saul replied. You are not able to go out against this Philistine. And fight him. You are only a young man. And he has been a warrior from his youth. 34, David, but David said to him, said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its head, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Now jump with me to verse 45. Praise the name of the Lord. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Hallelujah. Amen. Whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it's not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David knew God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David knew God. He knew God because he knew God. He was able to see the situation from God's perspective. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the people there, the Philistines and the uh, the Israeli army, what they saw was this tall, strong, warring giant of a man who was kit in all the armor. That's what they saw, who could just with one swing of his javelin slay more than 10 people with one sling. That's what they saw. But before God, this so-called giant was just a tiny speck. Hallelujah. Amen. And to David, he was too big to be missed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David took in the situation based on his knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen. First, the Israelites 
the Israeli army belonged to God. That was it. They were God's own people. They were the army of the living God. That is how he viewed them. That is how he saw them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And to David, that, that, this so-called giant, he's not a so-called, he was a true giant. So let me stop using so-called. He indeed was a giant, massive in size. He, this giant of a man was just someone who had defied God. And David knew that in defying God, that God will bring him down to his real size. That is the way he is before God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So from David's story, we see that we all, we need to know God. So that if we have God and have knowledge of him, we can view every situation from God's perspective. Hallelujah. Amen. We can view every situation from God's perspective. Once you see clearly from Jehovah's perspective, like David did, you will indeed do exploits Amen. for God. You see, he said it. He said, everyone will know that it's not by, work, that not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you all into our hands. The rest of the story we know. I want to say that no matter what, how towering the situation you are facing is, no matter how of a strangled hold it has over you, you know the armor that Goliath had was an armor. No matter how much it is taunting you and letting you know I'm coming after you, I'm getting you, you're not getting away from this. I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, see that problem, see that situation from God's perspective. There is nothing impossible with our God. Hallelujah. Amen. When you see it from God's perspective, then you now know how to go after it. Hallelujah. God will grant you the wisdom within which to tackle it. He will give you the power, the strength, the ability you need to pieces that situation. Hallelujah. And walk through and do exploits for God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My second story is found in the book of Daniel. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm just going to say again, if you think you know who I'm going to talk about now, who this story is all about, please just type it out there. I'm going to, and I'll give you clues as I go along. So I'm going to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego replied him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to verse 22. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Bishop, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? We look at this. These are three young men we call them the story of the three hebrew children who did exploits they stood their ground and we saw god coming and rescuing them from such a a dangerous situation because they stood their ground there are many excuses that they could have given but you see i want to 
bring out just three excuses, three excuses that they could have used out of many. I'm sure if we go through, we can get up to eight, up to 10. But let us look at three to avoid them going into that fire. They could have said, we will bow, but not actually washing the idol. I don't know how many of you remember the story of Naaman the leper, that strong warrior who was besieged by leprosy and was cured by entering into the um, river seven times. There's not much time. I would have liked to have read to you, but if you want to, it's in 2 Kings 5, 17 to 18. That's the reference. Go and read it. You will see where he was saying to the prophet at that time, saying, please, I want you to pray for me that when I go with my master into that um, place where he worships and my master bows down to his God and I bow down, let God forgive me. He could have used, so there was precedence, praise the Lord. So these three Hebrew children could have used that precedence to say, ah, we're in a foreign land, let us bow. They could have used that excuse, but they didn't. They could have used the excuse saying that the king has absolute power. We must obey him. God will understand. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. We all have different things that we have to go through. We are working in an environment that God's laws are outlawed in, in, in the environment. And they want to force us to think like, to say what is wrong is right. So we may find ourselves in a situation and we say, okay, I'm only saying this, God understands. But in the name of Jesus, we will not, amen? We will, we will be able to do exploits and resist in the mighty name of Jesus. The third example they could have used, if we get ourselves killed and pagans take our position, who will help our people? <clears throat> Remember, they were in high places they were, you know, in places of authority in Nebuchadnezzar's um, government. And they could have used that excuse, but they did not. Hallelujah. Amen. They did not. They were able to resist. Hallelujah. Amen. Resist Nebuchadnezzar. They were confident that God could deliver them. But they were determined to be faithful regardless of the consequences even if it threatened their personal safety. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, today, a lot of us believe that if we just have enough faith, that God will protect us, he will rescue us and answer our prayers in the way we desire. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is our belief. But we need to remember that even Jesus himself told us when he was doing the Sermon on the Mount, Remember, he said that because of your faith, you will face persecution and you, were, and you are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, blessed are, those who will, blessed are those who are persecuted because of their faith in me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in John 16, 33, he says, in this world, you will have many troubles. But hey, hold it. I have, I'm giving you peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You see, only the rope that bound them was bound. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to say to this that they came up and only the rope. They walked out of that fiery furnace. Only the rope. They, they, you know the story. They, they, there was no smell of fire. Their clothes were not burnt. Only the rope that bound them. Our God is still in the business of doing miracles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's still in that business. And we just need to learn to trust him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can trust him if only we know him. Hallelujah. Amen. We can trust him if only we know him. Hallelujah. Amen. And how do we increase in our knowledge of him? How did these men do exploits? What did they do? What is it that David did? Can we, can we break down what David did and then apply to our lives? Can we break down in step by step what the three Hebrew children did and apply it to our lives? Can we, can we pray for the consistency to apply it to our lives? Praise the Lord. 
First thing to know God is to be able to read the Bible every day. Praise the Lord. Whatever it is that David had, whether it was the Torah, the scrolls, whatever it is that the children, the three Hebrew children had, they had something that they knew that they were going back to, to know about this God, the history of what God had done for them. Praise the Lord. They read it, they understood it, and they kept going at it. Praise the Lord. So you and me, we have to read our Bible on a daily basis with understanding. Praise the Lord. Share what you are learning within your sphere of influence. Don't keep it to yourself. See David, he came with his testimony. Say, look at what happened to me. The bear, the lion. They came after my sheep. I killed them. I, I struck them. Then they now came after me. I killed them. God who did it will do it again. Praise the Lord. The three Hebrew children, we have a God, oh, we cannot, we cannot bow down to this because we know our God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, so begin a discipling relationship with a friend or even a, or who you call a mentor. I believe that the three Hebrew children, that was the kind of relationship they had. They had that kind of relationship with, the, with themselves, with Daniel, all together. Because they always went back. Remember, Daniel went back to their own company. They had that kind of relationship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Said, submit to the spiritual authority of trusted you know, church leaders. So submit to the authority of your pastors and those that God has put, you know, in, in positions of authority within the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even David, David had Nathan, the prophet, who guided him, who he submitted to. Even when he was a king, he listened. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If we do this, if we can consistently do these things, we will get to know God, praise the Lord, and know him in a manner that will enable us to do great exploits. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, I want us to turn to a book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians, I want to close with that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 and it's to close with this prayer he said i'll pray in the name of jesus that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened in order that you would know the hope to which god has called you and you will know the riches of his glorious inheritance in you his holy person in the mighty name of jesus and you would know his incomparable great power that is given to you who believes in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know that that power is the same as the mighty strength that he exerted when he raised Jesus from the dead. That power is yours. It is available to you. Hallelujah. My prayer is that the heart of your heart, the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. Hallelujah. And you will know the power that God has for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. One last thing. To know God is to know what his, to read his word and to know what his word says to us. So from next week, by God's grace, we will begin to look at the epistles. We're going to start with the book of Corinthians. So I have a little homework for you. Read 1 Corinthians chapters 1 to 4. God, by his grace, this is a series of knowing God more. We are going to hear from the words of those who walked with Jesus, the apostles, so that we can know him more and we can stand our ground like the three Hebrew children and do exploits with God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Exploits your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. One more time, say, I am poised for exploits. 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 You are poised for exploits Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank Jehovah, you. we give you praise. 
Mighty God, we bless you for your word. We know you have taken it, O oh Lord, and you have multiplied it in the hearts of many. And you have given them something in nuggets of truth that would enable them to stand firm and stand strong in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. We do give offering. So offering, please, your tithes and your offering into the Fountain of Life Church London. If God is talking to you and you would like to give into the ministry because it is a good soil to give into, direct message us and we will send you the account details to pay the money in. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I know you have been thoroughly and wonderfully blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.